The Cascade Range is known for its looming giants. Mount Rainier, Mount Hood and Mount St. Helens dominate the skyline of the Pacific Northwest, their snowy crowns rising above forests and rivers, symbols of both beauty and danger. These iconic volcanoes are etched into the collective imagination of the United States. Their eruptions, past and potential, are the subjects of documentaries, disaster scenarios, and the ever-present anxiety that life near an active volcano brings. And yet, a new set of satellite radar images, known as INSAR, suggests the greatest threat is not the familiar peaks that draw hikers and photographers, but something far more widespread, hidden, and insidious. The findings reveal a simmering underworld of smaller volcanic fields that stretch across hundreds of square miles, far less studied and far less predictable than their towering counterparts. To understand why these revelations are so concerning, it helps to first place them within the broader context of volcanism in the western United States. Yellowstone Caldera in Wyoming is perhaps the most famous volcanic system in the country. Its potential for catastrophic eruption has made it a household name, a geologic ticking clock featured endlessly in speculative programs. But the Pacific Northwest tells a different story. Here the peaks themselves, Rainier, St. Helens, Hood, are giants born of the slow collision of tectonic plates built over hundreds of thousands of years of eruptions. They are composite volcanoes, layers of lava and ash stacked in grand cones, they erupt with terrifying force, yes, but their locations are fixed. They are monitored, mapped and modelled. Scientists know where to look for signs of trouble. But INSAR has now drawn attention to what lies between those giants. Distributed volcanic fields, sometimes dismissed as geological curiosities, are now being reconsidered as the most likely source of the next eruption in the Cascades. These fields do not conform to the image most people have of a volcano. There is no single cone towering over the land, no obvious mountain waiting to burst. Instead, there are vast clusters of small vents, cinder cones, craters and fissures that pepper the landscape. Each eruption is a one-time event. A vent opens, magma escapes, and then that particular spot goes silent forever. The next eruption may occur miles away, with no obvious warning that the ground beneath is preparing to break. One of the most striking examples of such a landscape is Craters of the Moon in Idaho, a sprawling volcanic field of black rock, twisted lava and scattered cones. Another is Sunset Crater in northern Arizona, part of the broader volcanic fields of the American Southwest. These places are reminders that distributed volcanism is not a rarity, but a common mode of eruption across the western states. And in the Cascades, these fields are everywhere. Geologists count them in the thousands, filling the gaps between the great peaks of Oregon and Washington. Until recently, their quiet presence led many to treat them as lesser threats. But INSAR, satellite radar that measures ground deformation with astonishing precision, has started to change that perception. The technology works by bouncing radar signals from satellites to Earth's surface and comparing repeated images over time. Even a fraction of an inch of uplift or subsidence can be detected. For volcano monitoring, this is invaluable. It allows scientists to see where magma may be intruding underground, swelling the crust long before any eruption occurs. The new imagery has revealed something unsettling. Across portions of southern Washington and northern Oregon, subtle patterns of uplift are showing up in areas long thought dormant. The West Crater Volcanic Field, lying between Mount St. Helens to the north and the Columbia River to the south, has emerged as one of the hot spots of concern. To the casual observer, West Crater is little more than a patch of forested hills and old lava flows. But the INSAR data suggests the system is not as quiet as it appears. The geologic record already hinted at its restless past. The earliest known eruption in the West Crater area dates back roughly 360,000 years, when a modest basaltic lava flow spilled out near Soda Peaks. Since then, at least 15 eruptions have been recorded, though the true number may be higher. In the last 10,000 years alone, there were at least two confirmed and three suspected eruptions, producing a range of features. Andesitic lava flows, a basaltic scoria cone, and even an explosive crater. The most recent eruption occurred just 2,000 years ago, geologically speaking, the blink of an eye. 
That eruption produced two thick andesite lava flows and a dome, leaving scars still visible beneath the forest. The problem is not merely that eruptions happened here, but that scientists still know very little about how the system works. Unlike the major cones, where decades of monitoring and research provide a clearer picture of magma storage and eruption style, fields like West Crater remain shrouded in uncertainty. Where exactly is the magma stored? How hot is it? How does it evolve before eruption? These questions are not academic. They define whether the next eruption will be a gentle lava flow or an explosive event that hurls ash across the region. To untangle these mysteries, geologists from the USGS Cascades Volcano Observatory have studied the rocks in fine detail. By slicing samples thin enough to be examined under a microscope, they can read the history recorded in crystals. Some crystals reveal the depths and temperatures of magma storage. Others hint at chemical interactions between molten rock and the Earth's crust. What they found at West Crater was illuminating and troubling. The andesitic magmas of West Crater appear to have absorbed significant amounts of crustal rock at depths between 6 and 24 kilometres. This assimilation process thickens the magma, making it sticky, sluggish and prone to explosive behaviour. That explains why some of the eruptions here were violent, producing domes and craters. In contrast, the basaltic magmas show little evidence of such contamination. They stalled deeper, more than 24 kilometres down, and when they erupted, they behaved more like the fluid lava of Hawaii or Iceland, spreading in broad flows. The implication is that the same volcanic field can produce very different eruption styles, depending on the pathway magma takes through the crust. Now, with INSAR showing ground movement in areas around West Crater, the concern is no longer hypothetical. Future eruptions are not only possible, they are inevitable. Distributed volcanic fields make up the overwhelming majority of volcanic features in the Cascades. They have erupted repeatedly in the past 10,000 years. And unlike the towering peaks that dominate the horizon, they can emerge suddenly from seemingly ordinary ground. This is what makes them a greater threat than the peaks themselves, Rainier, Hood, St. Helens, these are known quantities, each heavily monitored with seismometers, GPS stations, gas sensors, and constant satellite surveillance. But fields like West Crater and Indian Heaven are sprawling, with no obvious central vent to watch. Thousands of potential eruption sites dot the landscape, each one a candidate for the next vent. Monitoring every inch is impossible. When the ground finally breaks, the eruption could be in an unexpected place, close to roads, towns, or infrastructure. The thought is chilling. Imagine waking up in a rural community near Trout Lake or Cougar, Washington, to see a fissure opening in the forest, lava pouring out, or ash rising into the sky. With distributed volcanism, that is not science fiction, but geologic reality. And the INSAR data suggests the seeds of such events may already be planted beneath the surface. The radar signatures, now coming from southern Washington and northern Oregon, are part of a growing body of data that redefines volcanic risk in the Pacific Northwest. For years, public attention has focused on the iconic stratovolcanoes. These are dramatic, visible and familiar. But the INSAR patterns suggest that the quieter volcanic fields, distributed across the region like a patchwork, may represent a more pressing source of future eruptions. Their unpredictability, wide distribution, and history of recent activity make them uniquely challenging to prepare for. Consider the West Crater system again. Geologists estimate that in the past 10,000 years it has erupted multiple times, including an event just two millennia ago. That may sound distant, but measured against the geologic scale, it places the field firmly in the category of active. If a volcano has erupted within the past 10,000 years, it is considered active by international definition. This places West Crater alongside the likes of Mount Rainier or Mount Hood in terms of official status, even though it lacks the visual drama of those peaks. The difference is that while Rainier rises conspicuously above the landscape, announcing its presence to anyone who looks, West Crater hides in plain sight. Dense forests cloak its lava flows, and hikers may walk unknowingly across the scars of past eruptions without realising they are on volcanic ground. The new satellite imagery has picked up hints of subtle uplift in places like this, shifts in the crust so small that they are invisible to the human eye, 
but unmistakable in radar measurements. This deformation could be caused by magma accumulating deep underground, slowly pressing against the crust. It does not mean an eruption is imminent, but it does confirm the system is alive, not extinct. For scientists, this raises urgent questions. How often do these distributed fields show signs of unrest? How far in advance can magma intrusion be detected? Can these subtle bulges in the land be distinguished from harmless tectonic or groundwater changes? These are the kinds of puzzles that now preoccupy researchers at the USGS Cascades Volcano Observatory. The uncertainty is compounded by the variety of possible eruption styles. A distributed field can produce anything from a small spatter cone with limited lava output to a viscous dome-building eruption capable of explosions. This variability stems from the chemistry of the magma and the degree of crustal assimilation, as the West Crater studies demonstrated. Unlike a stratovolcano with a long history of eruptions that can be studied to build a model of future behaviour, a distributed field is less predictable. Each vent is effectively a new experiment. The past provides some guidance, but not enough to confidently say what the next eruption will look like. The societal implications are considerable. A lava flow emerging from a vent in a remote forest may seem manageable, but if it occurs near transportation routes, power infrastructure or communities, it becomes a crisis. The southern Washington and northern Oregon corridor, including areas along the Columbia River, is home to towns, highways and the critical transmission lines that connect energy between states. An eruption here would not need to be catastrophic on a global scale to create local and regional disruption. Even moderate eruptions can shut down highways, destroy utilities and scatter ash that clogs engines and contaminates water supplies. History demonstrates this clearly. The eruption of Mount St. Helens in 1980, though concentrated in a relatively rural part of Washington, disrupted air traffic across the continent as its ash plume spread eastward. That was from a single cone with well-mapped history. Distributed fields present a different challenge. Their eruptions could begin with little notice, from a location not under close surveillance, complicating early warning. Other fields in Oregon tell a similar story. The Sand Mountain Volcanic Field, Blue Lake Crater, Belknap Crater, Davis Lake and Cinnamon Butte are all part of this broader network of distributed systems. Some last erupted only a few thousand years ago. In volcanic terms, this is recent. Collectively, they represent an extensive volcanic province that has not been appreciated in the same way as the towering cones. And yet, according to geologists, they are by far the most numerous and therefore statistically the most likely to produce the next eruption. The INSAR imagery offers a new way to track them. By building a continuous record of ground motion, scientists can compare signals across different fields and distinguish patterns of activity. This requires immense data processing and coordination, as the signals can be subtle and often overlap with non-volcanic causes, such as groundwater withdrawal or tectonic slip. But the payoff is significant. For the first time, researchers can monitor entire volcanic fields at once, not just the obvious peaks. The findings also point to a need for public awareness. Most residents of the Pacific Northwest know Mount St. Helens erupted in living memory. They know Rainier looms as a potential threat. But few could name West Crater, Indian Heaven or Sand Mountain. These places do not dominate postcards or hiking guides, yet they are alive, part of the same cascade arc, fueled by the same subduction processes that build the giants. By ignoring them, communities risk underestimating the real breadth of volcanic hazard. Preparation is complicated by the nature of distributed volcanism. Emergency planners can model lahar paths from Rainier or Hood because the source is fixed. They can simulate ashfall from St. Helens by referencing its known vent. But for distributed fields, the source location is unknown until the eruption begins. This requires a different kind of readiness. Flexible, region-wide planning rather than site-specific scenarios. Communities must be prepared for the possibility of a new vent appearing near them, not just for an eruption from a familiar peak. Scientists are careful not to overstate the immediacy of the threat. The INSAR signals, while significant, do not mean an eruption is imminent tomorrow or next year. What they do mean is that the systems are not dormant. They are active 
and accumulating magma. Over centuries, perhaps sooner, this will result in eruptions. The real story, then, is not one of impending catastrophe, but of overlooked risk. Risk that is diffuse, harder to track, and deserving of more attention in both science and public discourse. The comparison with Yellowstone is instructive. Much of the public fear surrounding Yellowstone stems from its potential for a super-eruption, an event of continental impact, but such eruptions are exceedingly rare. In contrast, distributed fields erupt far more frequently. They may not devastate entire nations, but they can upend regions. In many ways, they are the likelier hazard, precisely because they are common. Looking forward, the integration of INSAR with ground-based monitoring is likely to transform volcanic risk assessment in the Cascades. As satellite technology advances, the resolution and frequency of data will improve, giving scientists a more continuous and detailed picture of ground motion. Combined with geochemical studies of rocks, seismic monitoring and gas emissions, this creates a more holistic framework for understanding these fields. But science alone cannot mitigate the risk. Public agencies, emergency managers and local communities will need to absorb this new understanding and adapt their planning accordingly. The Cascades have always been a land of fire, shaped by the relentless subduction of one plate beneath another. The Great Cones are monuments to this process, but they are not the whole story. Between them lies a hidden landscape of smaller volcanoes, scattered across hundreds of square miles, each capable of springing to life with little warning. Thanks to INSAR, the veil is lifting. What it reveals is not a singular looming disaster, but a persistent distributed hazard that has been underestimated for too long. For the residents of Oregon and Washington, the message is not panic, but awareness. The peaks will always draw the eye, but the ground between them may matter more. The next eruption in the Cascades is not necessarily waiting in the shadow of Rainier or Hood. It may come from a quiet forest clearing, a forgotten lava field, or a meadow that has not seen fire for thousands of years. The question is not if, but where and when. And with the new tools of satellite monitoring, scientists are finally beginning to narrow the answers. The story of the Cascades is not simply one of mountains, but of fields, hidden vents, and restless magma. The peaks may symbolize the range, but it is the scattered volcanoes beneath the radar, now visible through INSAR, that redefine the true scope of volcanic risk in the Pacific Northwest. If you found this investigation insightful, make sure to like, share and subscribe so more people can stay informed about the science shaping our understanding of hidden natural hazards.